Properly cemented joints are essential for the effectiveness of any plastic pipe system. Before starting the installation, make sure you are prepared with all the right materials for the job. The proper primer, cement, and if necessary cleaner, the right size applicator, and enough manpower in your joining crew for the size of the job. Start by cutting the pipe as square as possible. When large diameter pipe has to be cut, a pipe wrap or circumferential tape should be used to mark a guideline around the OD of the pipe. By cutting along this mark, the installer will be able to make a square cut. For large diameter pipe, it may be preferable to use an electric reciprocating saw, band saw, or other type of mechanical power saw. Safety is a major consideration when choosing a power saw. Only trained and skilled personnel should be permitted to operate large mechanical saws. Check the end of the pipe to make sure it has been cut squarely. Remove inside diameter burrs or raised beads with a deburring tool or knife. Remove the burrs or raised beads on the outside diameter of the pipe by using a file, external deburring tool, or power beveling machine that will produce a 3 seconds inch, 10 to 15 degree chamfer or bevel. The use of a side grinder or mechanical disc sander is not recommended. Too much bevel on the pipe end can produce a gap at the fitting bottom. Now, with a clean, dry rag, remove any dirt, grease, shavings, or moisture from inside and outside the pipe, pipe bell, or fitting socket. All surfaces to be joined must be free of foreign material. This includes any chemical, paint, coatings, or any other residue around the job site that may have drifted to the pipe during storage. IPS has a variety of cleaners available for removing these types of materials. A good dry fit occurs when the pipe enters the fitting at least one-third to two-thirds of the way into the socket without being forced. This dry fit should not be too tight or loose enough to jiggle. A net fit occurs when the pipe bottoms into the fitting socket with no interference, but without slop. Measure the fitting socket length and mark this distance on the pipe OD. To ensure the fitting has been fully inserted, add a couple of inches to this distance and make a second check mark on the pipe as the primer and cement will remove the first mark. A mechanical pipe joining device should be used to ensure that the pipe is fully bottomed out in the fitting socket or pipe bell. In this demonstration, the IPS pipe puller tool is used to assemble the joint. The socket bar attachment, used for inline fittings, is placed equal distance over the center of the socket entrance. Two adjustable locks keep the bar centered on the fitting so that an equal, even force is applied. This keeps the fitting from cocking to one side and producing a large, undesirable gap. Force is transferred from a cable winch to the socket bar and other attachments by means of a cable yoke that splits the force and helps to produce an equal, even amount of tension necessary to bottom out large diameter fittings. First, choose the proper applicator that will work best for your job. Either a swab or roller should be used for large diameter pipe. Paint or bristle type brushes are not recommended. The applicator's size should be approximately one-half the pipe diameter. The application of primer is an extremely important step in creating a first-class, long-lasting joint. Primer softens the joint area so the joint can fuse together. Without primer, fusion is often weak and a joint may fail. Before installation, Check the penetration or softening ability of the primer on a scrap piece by scraping a few thousandths of an inch. Now apply primer, vigorously working it into the fitting socket, keeping the surface and applicator wet until the surface has been softened. Remove any puddles. In the same manner, vigorously apply the primer to the end of the pipe, equal to the depth of the fitting socket. Then apply a second application of primer to the fitting. Do not allow primer to run down the inside of the fitting or pipe. In the case of belled end pipe, do not allow the primer to run past the bell socket into the pipe. Placing a board under the fitting, giving it a forward tilt, may help keep the primer and cement from running into the fitting socket. With the proper size and type of applicator, while surfaces are still wet and without hesitation, apply the appropriate weld-on cement in a full, even layer onto the pipe, equal to the depth of the fitting socket. Then immediately apply a medium layer of cement to the fitting socket. Avoid puddling. 
Without delay, apply a second even layer of cement on the pipe. Most joint failures are caused by insufficient application of cement. Do not let the cement run down the inside of the fitting or pipe. In the case of belled end pipe, do not let the cement run past the bell socket into the pipe. Working quickly, assemble the pipe and fitting while the cement is still wet. If not completely wet, recoat parts before assembly. Hold the joint together for a minimum of 30 seconds or more depending on the temperature. This will eliminate movement or joint push-out. Then wipe off the excess cement, including the ring or bead around the socket entrance. This will help the joint to cure faster. Avoid disturbing the joint as it cures. If cement coatings have hardened, cut pipe, dispose of pipe and fitting and start over. Do not assemble partially cured surfaces. Now, let's review the four basic principles of solvent cementing. Joining surfaces must be softened and made semi-fluid. Sufficient cement must be applied. Assemble while still wet and fluid. Joint strength develops as the cement dries. From the very beginning, IPS Weld On has been dedicated to serving you, our customers. We continually strive to offer the most advanced products available for joining plastic pipe. Along with our products, it is our mission to provide you with the knowledge and educational tools so that every job you perform delivers the best possible results. IPS Weld On, creating a strong bond with you. IPS Weld On would like to thank all the companies involved in the making of this training movie.